Kyle Blythe is a business analyst and a functional expert at NYU. He has worked closely with faculty and technical teams in developing and supporting Sakai functionality at the university. So again, this is the Gradebook Enhancements Project. I'm now going to turn the presentation over to Kyle, who I'm not seeing on. I put him to the top. Oh, you put him to the top. Oh, okay. Thanks, uh, Brian. Okay, Kyle, you should have uh, presentation capability now in just one second here. All right. Great. And by the way, I am recording this. Mm -hmm. Kyle, are you there? Yes. Great. Hi, everyone. Uh, so this is Jeff Pash. I'm sitting here with Kyle Blythe. And today we're going to talk about the work that the team has been doing on the Gradebook Enhancements Project. So just a quick agenda. Um, we'll just talk, about, talk a little bit about the background of the project, the scope of the project, and then we'll look at, uh, look at the designs with an exclamation point. Um, I'll talk about some technical bits um, as much as I can, um, and then we'll get to your questions. Um, so before I get into the background, I just want to give you a little eye candy to make sure you stick around for this presentation because you could easily just leave. Um, so we're going to show you um, the work we've been doing to change the gradebook from this into something like this. Okay. so. We'll come back to that um, in just a bit. Uh, so why did we choose Gradebook? Um, so we did, NYU did two faculty surveys and the Gradebook emerged as the tool with the highest level of dissatisfaction of any of the tools in Sakai. Um, so in those surveys, we also captured user comments about the tool, their pain points, et cetera. Um, and we'll touch on that more in a bit. Um, we also received feedback through help tickets that we um, that we got at our, uh, through our uh, service desk. Um, and we also just saw the problems that folks were having through those tickets. NYU had moved from Blackboard 8 to Sakai and there are definite differences between those two gradebooks. Um, we also received feedback in consultations and in trainings. Um, and we also just through conversations with folks from other institutions and vendors um, we, you know, had a strong sense that this was a tool we wanted to focus on. So I want to talk about the fact that this is, this is a project where uh, we have multiple partners who are engaged in the project and who are contributing um, directly to the project. Um, so in addition to NYU, um, there's Notre Dame, um, AsahiNet, and Longsight. And then just quickly, here's a list of the folks um, who are involved um, from those different groups. Okay, so where and how did we get started with this? So we, we analyzed data um, from the surveys, from the two surveys that we talked about, and also help ticket data. Um, and then we worked to draw out the common themes um, and pain points from, um, from those two pieces. Um, we also had input from our project partners where they were, you know, where clients were seeing issues, where their institutions were seeing issues with the gradebook. Um, and we pulled all that uh, data together. Um, and then just, as I said, input from other members of the Sakai community. As we started getting interested in this, um, I made a, I just made a few phone calls to uh, members of the PMC and just sort of talked through um, you know, what, what they saw as some of the issues um, and some possible directions um, for the gradebook. And one of the pieces of advice I got was, you know, start looking at um, other gradebook products to see, you know, what they do well um, and what they don't do so well. Um, so that included Gradebook 2, Canvas, uh, Blackboard, and D2L. So some of the takeaways um, from the data we gathered uh, <laughs> One point was, you know, uh, we just saw some generic sort, sort of um, comments like, I don't like it, it's bad, you know, change it. Um, but then something sort of came to the surface, which was uh, spreadsheet entry. Um, and that sort of uh, another theme along those lines was just, we want it to be easier to enter grades and to modify grades. 
Um, another uh, another point that came up was around um, confusion surrounding import and export of grades, um, the ability to enter letter grades, that was a common request, um, and a need for more clarity around integrations between the gradebook and other tools. So we focused in on, spread, on spreadsheet entry, and that's because users had explicitly requested that. Why can't I just enter my grades like a spreadsheet? You know, I see on the all grade tab, all grades tab, I see everything in a spreadsheet. Why can't I enter into that? Um, it also encompassed, you know, another theme, as I mentioned, that easier grade entry and modification. Um, it was a common feature that we saw across other gradebook products when we did that analysis. Um, and also, many folks use spreadsheets already um, in tracking and calculating their grades. So it's a very familiar conceptual model for folks. So we wanted to integrate that in. Therefore, we arrived at a fairly um, tightly scoped um, project, um, the goals of which have been um, to implement spreadsheet entry, to consolidate and simplify the import and export capabilities, and to have a strong focus on usability of the tool, and also to bake in accessibility um, from the very beginning. So what was our approach? Um, so we started with a bit of user research, um, you know, as I talked about gathering that data, um, but then also talking to um, getting some initial thoughts from, uh, from instructors um, in person. We started, you know, putting together prototypes and we, like I said, we definitely looked at some of those other grade books and that informed our prototypes. Um, and before we got too far into it, um, you know, we had a tech review. So um, Steve, Steve Swinsberg uh, is, uh, is involved in this project um, along with uh, one other developer, uh, Peyton Giles. Um, so they've been involved right from the beginning. Um, so we didn't get too far off in a direction that wasn't technically feasible. And also, like I said, um, we have we actually have a company you might have noticed it on the um, the team slide um, called the Pacello Group, who's been working with us on accessibility. So um, again, we we started that right from the beginning to make sure we didn't go down a path that um, you know didn't uh, meet accessibility requirements. Um, and they also along the way giving us uh, you know input on usability. And then you know it becomes a cyclical research, uh, sorry, a cyclical process where then we come back to user research. Um, you know we talked, we talked with individuals. You know um, they showed us how they're using the gradebook currently, um, and that surfaced you know some things that were working well for them, um, but also some pain points. Uh, so once we um, so we did that with the current gradebook, and then you know at the end of those sessions we would show them um, our prototypes and just, you know, get some, get some response from them. Um, and then, you know, we went back to our prototypes um, and that's, that's a cyclical process. Okay, so how about I stop talking and uh, let's, let's see this thing. Kyle? Great. Thanks, Jeff. Okay, so I'm going to actually go ahead and pull up our prototype as it currently exists. So here we have it within uh, the framework of Sakai. And as you can see, the spreadsheet uh, is really highlighted, you know, first and foremost within the new design. So before I actually start getting into the details of the spreadsheet, uh, I'm actually going to also pull up a vanilla instance of Sakai 10 that has the gradebook in it so that we can sort of compare and contrast because this is based off of gradebook 1. It has all of the functionality that gradebook 1 has in it as well and a lot of the same workflows. It's just consolidated menus, simplified processes. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this up right now. And this should look very familiar. And the first thing that we see uh, when we're in Sky 10 looking at the gradebook is just how many menus you have along the top of the screen here. Uh, so what we've really tried to do is take all these options and combine them whenever possible to try and make something that's simpler and easier to use. So first and foremost, you've got gradebook items and all grades, uh, gradebook items where you actually create items and enter the actual grade values, and then all grades, which is sort of a view-only spreadsheet view. 
So what we've tried to do is take this and combine this into a single workable spreadsheet. Uh, what we also tried to do is take some of the settings that you get across some of these other menus and where it would make sense to be able to edit that directly in the spreadsheet, we've done so. So this allows us to be able to have one simple settings menu that actually contains only a few options for high level settings that you'd want to manipulate. Uh, another thing that we've done is take the import export process and create a much simpler and more straightforward workflow for it. So uh, in Gradebook 1, as it currently exists, there's actually two different import options that you get. There's one that shows up within the Gradebook items screen, and then there's another that's actually in a separate tab called import grades. And uh, we'll get into this in a little bit, but these do two different things, actually. So we're working on combining that into one workflow. Okay, so let's actually jump straight into this uh, spreadsheet view and start taking a look at what it can do. So uh, the first thing that you'll notice when you look at it is that you've got some data on the left here, and this is just uh, student-related data. So you've got a list of your student names, the section that they belong to, and then the final course grade as it's currently being calculated. Next to that is where we actually have our gradebook items. And similar to what you get within the all grades view, these gradebook items are now being displayed as columns. Mm -hmm. But the process for actually adding grades is very similar to what you experience in gradebook one. So you'll notice that there's a button right up at the top here called add grade item. When I click on this, this will actually look very familiar to people, uh, this is where you just select the details for an item that you want to create. So it's the same process as in Gradebook 1, and when I go ahead and create it, it's going to actually add a new column into my spreadsheet. So as far as actually entering grades into the spreadsheet goes, uh, navigating around the spreadsheet is very much modeled after what you get in Excel and Google Spreadsheet, uh, Apple Numbers. You know, if you've used a spreadsheet before, this will be immediately familiar to you. Uh, you can move around through tabs using your arrow keys or by clicking. You can tab through different ones. And if you click the enter key, you actually enter into a cell and pressing it again will move you down through the cells, uh, the same it would in any other application. And the process for actually entering grades uh, should be very fast and convenient. So when we click into it, you'll notice that you can see how many points it's out of. And I can just very quickly change this, click enter. And you'll see that it's actually going to save and validate. So I can see that this score was saved successfully and that it should work. So I can move through these uh, cell ranges very quickly. So it's very easy to go ahead and do so. And what's nice too is since it's validating, um, if I enter a score that's actually above the maximum allowed, it'll actually tell me that. So if I try and enter 101 out of 100 here, um, it's going to try and save it, and then it's going to give me an error message. So I have to actually go back and change that to a correct value for it to be able to save properly. Okay. So beyond actually entering values into the spreadsheet, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're trying to take various settings and options that are available throughout the screens in Gradebook 1 and enter them into the spreadsheet where it's applicable. So you'll notice when you actually hover over a cell, there's a little drop-down. If I click on that, it actually allows me to view the grade log, just like I can in Gradebook 1 when I'm in an actual item view. And I can also view and edit its comments. And what's nice, too, is you'll notice for a few of these cells, there's actually a little icon that shows me when there's a comment already in place. Uh, beyond the ability to do that for individual cells, I also have a drop-down for the actual items themselves. So I see some information here. If I click on this little drop-down, I can then edit the item details for that item. Or I have some options that are actually surfaced to make it really easy to be able to hide from students or show uh, the uh, release options for students, or exclude or include in course grade calculations. So I click that. It's now hidden from student view. But I can also release to students as well. And same thing for excluding or including in course grade calculations. Kyle, this is Neil. Um, we're getting questions coming in. Would you prefer for them to be at the end of your review or uh, as they come in? Uh, we'll, we'll take two. <laughs> okay. So uh, first question is, can you make the validation option, can it be an option for the gradebook? Some may want to add extra credit simply by going over the max. 
Sure. Yeah, that's that's something that we've we've talked about. Um, yeah, that that's a possibility. Um, good feedback. Okay. <clears throat> Would you like to take another another one more? Sure. Okay. Would it be able to make your new style gradebook? Would it be a would it be possible to make your new style gradebook as an alternate display option to instructors in case someone likes the old collab gradebook? Uh, yeah, I w that's something that we'll have to um, we'd have to discuss with the developers if that's if that's possible. I mean, we have tried to um, you know minimize the number of backend changes, um, but that's something we'd have to dig deeper into with uh, with Steve and company. Okay. We got a couple more, but if you want to continue on, let me know when you'd like to take a couple more questions. Okay, great. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay, uh, so continuing on with this idea of having drop downs that allow you to be able to access settings that used to be on different screens entirely, uh, we have this course grade column. So we've also included a drop down here that, if you were to click on it, would allow you to be able to do the grade override that you usually get in the course grade screen in Gradebook 1. So you could be able to do that very quickly right from this view and override final grades for students. And then once we get to settings, we'll see how you can actually release that final course grade to students. Okay, so moving our way left here back over to the student menu, uh, we also have a few other things. So a gradebook is only really useful if you can actually sort the data and work with the data the, the way that you want to. So we've taken the ability to find students and limit your gradebook by section, which used to be options in the all grades view, and included that right within the headers for these particular columns. So for find students, rather than have to actually type something, submit it, and then get a response, we actually have kind of a wildcard search in place. So if I start searching for a particular person, you'll notice that the spreadsheets actually first, last, and in our case, the student ID for it while we work through it. Okay, great. Uh, similarly, we also have the ability to view by a certain section right from here. And in addition to being able to filter down what you want to see, we also have some sorting options in place. So while you're going to, of course, be able to sort A to Z or Z to A whenever you'd like, uh, you'll be able to do that across all of the columns here. We also have a few other options in place. Because right now, what we're doing is we are showing uh, alphabetically by the user ID right here. But there might be some other sorting options that you want to do for students. Say you want to be able to sort by last name or by first name. So we were thinking of how we could go ahead and do that within the system. And as we were working through it, uh, the idea for it actually came from, oddly enough, iTunes. Uh, so allow me to actually to leave this very quickly and show you my music collection. Uh, one second. Yeah, you're, you're all bounded by FERPA regulation not to talk about Kyle's music selection. Go on. <laughs> well, I've actually only shown the Beatles right now, so you're not going to see my most embarrassing music choices. Okay, that's good. Yes. So in iTunes, when you have a list of all of your songs and you're sorting by album, there's a few different options that you have for doing so. Rather than going alphabetically by album alone, if you click on the actual title album, it's going to change to album by artist. And if you click again, it's going to go album by artist per year. So we thought that was a really nice way of being able to have these different sorting options without having to have a bulky menu in place. So we borrowed liberally from that. And going back to our gradebook, we have students by net ID. So if I click on that again, now it's going to be students by last name. We have our last name first, comma, first name. Now I click on it again, it's going to be students by first name. So that's a really nice way to be able to do that. And of course, we've also heard from its instructors in the past that sometimes they don't want to see the name of the student at all. They want to be able to grade it more anonymously. So we do have a drop down here that allows us to be able to hide the student name and only show their user ID. OK, so let me go ahead and bring that back. So those are some of the sorting options that we're getting in this area for moving between our students and our sections. But as for the spreadsheet itself, when you have a lot of items or a lot of columns in a spreadsheet, it can be very daunting as you sort of scroll through it to try and have 
some issues where you want to be able to reorganize what items appear where. And you might want to be able to tell if you're looking at a gradebook what category thing. As far as reordering goes, creating a custom order for your gradebook, that's going to be very easy in this new version of the gradebook because you can just click and drag a column to a new position. And that way you can save a custom order for yourself. Additionally, if you'd like to be able to, uh, hold on here. Okay. Additionally, if you'd like to be able to view the category information for your items. So if you'd like to be able to see as a whole how your category is and what items belong to that category, you can choose to group by category. And if I click on this, I'm actually going to get this really nice color-coded category grouping. So I'll be able to see that I have forums, that it's worth 20% of my final grade, and that these three items belong to this category. Um, in addition to that, uh, if I want to be able to show or hide individual items, this is actually something that exists in the All Grades view of Gradebook 1. But we want to be able to have something a little bit more dynamic. So if you're working with all of these items, and you'd like to be able to narrow it down to just one item or compare two different items, we have a Show Hide Grade Items menu. And if I click on this, I'm going to get a little menu that drops down like this, and this might actually look familiar to people that uh, are heavy users of Google Calendar. When you have multiple calendars on the left, you can select exactly which calendars you want to show and which you want to hide. So I could show all or hide all of my items, and you'll notice that I get this really uh, obvious message telling me that I'm viewing only a certain number of my maximum grade items. But I can also click through here and select a certain category to display, or deselect or select only individual items. It might be a little bit hard to see here with the shading, but you can actually see that when I deselect one item from a category, my category label is going to have a half-filled box kind of letting me know that uh, one of its items is not being displayed right now. So I can go through and show only the things that I want. So say I want to compare week one discussion with week one homework. I can go through and modify my grade view very easily, then show all to be able to display everything. Uh, additionally, we have a little drop down that allows you to be able to display only this category or only this item. Well, since, since okay. we're talking about categories, can I interject one of the questions? Sure. sure. Okay, so one of the questions is, will, uh, will it allow weighted gradebook items within a category like gradebook 2 has? Right now, gradebook 1 split equally the weights of the gradebook items within each category. That makes sense. Um, yeah, yeah. So for for kind of the initial um, phase of the project, we don't have that as a requirement. But that, but weight category and item weighting has um, has come up. It's come up in talking to users. So in terms of sort of next pieces of functionality that we would tackle, um, weighting um, item weighting and category weighting is definitely uh, definitely up there. Great. Okay, uh, so before we move on to any other screens in our gradebook, there is one last thing I wanna, that I want to point out, and this is something that we encounter a lot in consultations with faculty. So here you have your holistic view of your gradebook, but if you wanted to be able to see grades for just one student, how would you be able to do that in a gradebook? So we actually have a student breakdown option. When you scroll over any student's name and you click on that name, it's going to actually black out the rest of the screen so, you know, if you wanted to, as an instructor, sit down with a student and show them their grades, they wouldn't see anyone else's grades, but it's going to pull up a view of basically what their gradebook view looks like. So, uh, it's important to note that the student view of the gradebook isn't going to be a spreadsheet. It's still going to basically be two columns where you're going to see what your items are and then how you scored in that item. But this is a nice way of being... Uh, I don't know, your audio seems to have cut out. Student ...or show to a student. Because um, we frequently, when meeting with faculty, have faculty that would even, you know, they would sit there with a student to try and go through scores with them and literally hold a piece of paper up over their computer monitor to display only the grade to that student. So this yeah. is a little bit higher tech than yeah. that. That's, that's low-tech solutions in a high-tech environment, that paper. Sure. <laughs> okay. Ready so that is what we have. Yeah, sorry. sorry, go ahead. As I said, do you want to 
finish up? Are you uh, wrapping up a, a section? Or do you want a couple more questions? Uh, yeah, actually, so I, are we good with the, the spreadsheet? I think we're good with the grades view. Yeah, so th this probably is a good time to take um, take a few questions. And the session's 45 minutes, right? Right, right. Okay. So we get about 145. Yeah, we'll, just, we'll take a few questions now. We'll get through the next piece and then, um, yeah. Oh, so I've seen several questions about the student view. They would, people would like to see what the student sees. Is there any change to that? Oh, right. So um, actually, there, there wouldn't be much of a change there. And this is what Kyle was showing there is, is kind of a simplified view. I mean, we're, we're seeing it as um, very similar to Gradebook 1, actually. Um, so th they wouldn't see a spreadsheet view. They would see something similar to Gradebook, Gradebook 1 now. So there wouldn't be much difference there. And that piece where, you know, you click, you know, we're, as we were saying, to show a student their grades, this would also let, you know, the instructor know exactly what the student is seeing. Okay. Um, <clears throat> another question is, it says, is it, it would be great if there was an icon to show if the item is manually created or fed from a tool like quizzes, assignments, and so forth. And there will be. <laughs> yeah, actually, so that's, that's something we were going to mention. Um, you know, there's a lot, when we think about sort of pulling together the information that's on the All Grades tab um, and the, um, I'll just go over to it actually, um, and on the Gradebook Items tab, you know, th there's a good amount of information there and we're working on ways of how we show that in the header. So one of the things we want to do that's not added here yet is, is use the icon of the tool um, and place in the header to show, um, to show where it's coming from. So, so great idea. <laughs> well, and, and let me see. Um, Oh, sorry. Before, before uh, another question, let me just remind everyone that this this is a um, this is just a high fidelity uh, wireframe, so it's not all real yet. But you know, like I said, we've been working with Steve from the beginning, and um, he's been sort of building um, proof of concept and and you know keeping us in line in terms of you know not letting us go down a road where it's it's just not possible. So I just want to give that little disclaimer. But <laughs> go ahead, Neil. Yeah, so, so of course one thing is people are getting excited about it and wondering when it's going to be pushed into um, the Sakai. Well, everyone just calm down. Just take a breath and calm down. Um, so, yeah, we're, you know, working with Neil. Um, I'm sorry, you're, you're Neil. No, I'm working Neil. with Steve. <laughs> I get you too confused all the time. Um, working with Steve, um, uh, you know, we're, and, and talking with um, uh, Sam at Longsight, and others, um, you know, we would really like to get this included in Sakai 11. Um, and as as people people who know Steve know that um, he can he can really uh, bust through some stuff and and does some pretty high quality work. Um, so that's what uh, that's what we're aiming um, aiming for. And I know we'll get a lot of um, feedback and questions and those sorts of things on it. Um, so so that's why we're presenting to kind of put it out there and and see how people respond. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. Oh, here's one. Does the spreadsheet view style extra credit and drop the lowest columns differently than regular ones? Hmm. Does it style extra credit? That's that's a good um, that's a good question. Um, and we we haven't tackled it yet. Um, I think when we um, maybe that maybe that's something that could be done with an icon or styling of the text so so those are details in the header that we we need to work through I mean there is the danger of the header becoming so fat and busy um, that it's annoying so we've actually been playing with I ran into this guy Aaron Zakowski um, the other day he happened to be in New York um, and I showed him this and um, you know he actually had an idea of you know in that header maybe have sort of the basic basic details or basic information and then show more details so that header would you know you could look at it in the more detailed view and you could but you could collapse it down too so maybe that's something that could could live up there as well okay um, in the Sakai 10 instructor feedback and assignments is not shown in the gradebook um, as simple text uh, how are you, are you going to be addressing comments that are placed in other tools I guess for the grading well so I think assignment comments, I'm looking at Kyle, mm -hmm. but I think assignment comments now do flow through um, to the gradebook. Um, so surprise. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, but we we haven't um, that actually that sort of um, in in when we looked at the pain points and that kind of thing, there was that bit about confusion about tool integrations. Um, so that is something we want to look at. Just you know, and again, sort of as a phase two because our phase one is really getting the basics down, right? Um, but maybe in a phase two to look at you know how the tools are integrating. Okay. Um, so I have a number of more questions over here, but before I go any further, are there any more aspects of this that you want to uh, that you want to highlight? Yes, absolutely. Um, and so we'll try to move through those relatively quickly. Um, yeah. But um, I'll, I'll hand it back to Kyle. Okay, great. Yeah. So let me click through a few of the a uh, few more of the screens that we have here. Um, I can go through settings very quickly, actually, because so many of our settings have been placed in the spreadsheet itself. So when I go into settings now, rather than having two or three different screens worth of settings, I just have a few drop-down uh, accordion options here. So at the top of this, we wanted to really highlight the grade release rules, which actually exist in two different places. So uh, the ability to display release gradebook items to students and display the final course grade to students. So we wanted to highlight that there. We also have our categories and weighting, and then the grading schema for your course also within settings. But the one thing I do want to take a little bit of time to talk about uh, is the import-export process, which we put a lot of work into sort of simplifying and consolidating. So when I click on this, I actually just get a blank screen, but uh, let me switch over to sort of a lower fidelity wireframe to show you what we think this process is going to look like. Okay. So here uh, I have my import-export screen. And as I was mentioning earlier, there's basically two different import options in Gradebook 1. There's one on the Gradebook Items screen that allows you to be able to selectively choose which column from your imported spreadsheet you want to upload, and it's going to create that as a new item. So unfortunately, you can't actually update existing items that way. And there's also an import button in the menu that allows you to be able to upload an entire spreadsheet, and while it does allow you to uh, override existing items, it doesn't give you any granular control over which items you're selecting. So we want to be able to combine those two and have something a little bit easier to work with. So here I have my ability to download a template. And um, we have the option here to either download a blank template, which will just give you some general formatting uh, sort of recommendations to work with, or your full gradebook as it exists right now with all the grades and all the items in it. Uh, one other thing we're thinking about doing is being able to have the option to actually download any comments that are associated with gradebook items as well. Because right now, while you can import comments from the gradebook items screen, you can't actually download comments anywhere in the gradebook. Okay, so I've downloaded my template, I've entered my grades, I'm ready to import, so let me go ahead then and browse for a file and import it. And when I click continue here, what's going to happen is it's actually going to analyze the contents of my spreadsheet that I'm uploading, and it's going to do a few things. It's going to be able to tell me, first of all, if something is an existing item that I will be updating scores for, or if it's a new item that didn't exist in the gradebook before now. Beyond that, though, we're hoping that it's going to be able to actually then be able to tell us if uh, it actually has updated scores for an item, or if it has identical scores to what was already in the gradebook. That way I can know if I am going to be updating these items, or if these items I don't even need to worry about importing them. So I can see that all here in my status. And one other thing we can see here too is that it's going to be able to tell me if an item is coming from an existing tool already so that I won't be able to upload that because you have to actually then go into the tool to be able to change those grades. So I can just select the items that I want to upload. So I'm going to update these two items. I'm also going to create a few items. So when I go ahead and click Next, uh, normally what would happen in Gradebook 1 if I was creating new items is that they would just get created. And then I would have to go back and actually edit those after the fact to be able to have category associations or to have release, date or, uh, release options or due dates. But to make this simpler, we'd want to have a more guided process that would have you actually confirm the settings for each of the new items you're creating before the process gets finished. So if I click Next, it's going to have me uh, go through and confirm the settings for my first of two items that I'm uploading. So I would confirm the settings for that, and then confirm the settings for the second one. And then, once I go to the following screen, it's just going to give me a confirmation. It's going to tell me what I'm updating in the gradebook already, and what I'm going to be creating. 
So this takes those two options that exist in Gradebook 1 and makes it one simple workflow. Okay, great. So that is our prototype as it exists right now. Uh, so I want to hand it back to Jeff because he has a few other things to talk about. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be brief because I know um, we want to get to some other questions. Um, so let's see. So I think we're on. Yeah, great. Um, so just a couple um, technical bits, and I will say that I'm really not that I'm really not technical. Um, so we probably want to have some kind of follow up um, when Steve is awake um, because he's in Australia um, with Steve and Peyton, uh, where they can speak to this uh, more intelligently. But I just want to give some basic information. Um, so we'll be creating a new Sakai tool based on Wicket six. Um, we'll be using the in method grid component from Wicket stuff. Um, and you can see a little more um, information on that there if you're curious. Um, and then let's see some other information. Um, so in terms of, I mean, one, one thing that we started thinking about is, and some people might be thinking about now, is what about huge classes with large num numbers of people? So um, I think the way we're going to approach is just load the whole data set um, to start with. Um, and then as we start seeing um, bottlenecks, we have the option for infinite scroll or sort of a load more, load more rows feature. And then um, in terms of accessibility, um, we have the ability to add additional HTML attributes, um, and that enables us to add the required ARIA um, attributes uh, related to accessibility. Um, so like I said, I think it, I, I'm sure the technical folks have a lot more questions. Um, but like I said, you know, maybe we can have some sort of um, follow-up on this. Um, we could do another uh, webinar for those who are interested, and Steve can um, dig into the technical details. Um, so I think that's it. So Neil, I think we can get back to questions. Great, thank you. Um, so uh, I had a question myself, which is um, I assume it's also uh, internationalized, meaning that the different strings that it's showing can be translated easily. Yeah, I think. Um, I guess I didn't include it in here, but Steve had um, Steve had commented on that. Um, just looking in my notes. So yes, next question, and maybe I'll circle back to it. Okay. Well, oh, actually, like here it is. Sorry, he says. Um, bo -bo 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 -bo. Based on the latest stable version of Wicket six, this framework has excellent internationalization and accessibility features. So um, hopefully, we're we're on a good track there. That's great. I noticed a couple of questions here look like they're just making sure that Gradebook 1 features are being retained, which I'm assuming they are. So a couple of the questions were, are you retaining the ability to drop scores for a series of items in a category? And um, is there an extra credit option? I assume both of those things, since they're in Gradebook 1, they would, they would also be in this version. Yep, absolutely. Um, Kyle's just going to pop um, pop back to that maybe in settings, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so let's see. Yeah, yeah, so that's all there. Um, we, did, we didn't go into this just um, in terms of time, but we're retaining that. Um, and then the other one you asked about was extra credit, right? So, oh, right. yeah, sorry, mm -hmm. you're going there. Got it. Yeah, and so that's, that's included as well. Yeah. yeah. And then I noticed there was a, a, a general question about is there a more formal Q&A that people can participate in? Are there ways for the community to, what are the best ways for the community you know, to give you input and to get engaged. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, so we're not we're not quite there on um, QAing the um, the actual tool yet, but um, participants, welcome. Um, in terms of giving input or giving feedback and that sort of thing, yeah, I think I think we need to. I think we're at a point where we want to sort of um, um, you know, get get these up so people can start playing around a little bit and looking at them more and providing that feedback. I mean, in the um, in the short term, um, they're welcome to um, drop uh, drop me an email and maybe we'll just put our email addresses in the. We can just type it into the presentation so folks can um, folks can see it um, and maybe that's available in Lanyard too. So. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, and I see we just have a few more minutes. So I'll just get through as many of these as we can, and then we'll wrap up. Um, so another question is about LTI interaction. Uh, so it says, how will LTI interact with the gradebook? I know Turnitin wants to build LTI integration with Sakai that feeds scores from uh, from it to the, um, from Turnitin to the gradebook. It's a good question. I mean, I, d I don't know that it, there would be any real difference between um, the gradebook as it, um, 
as it stands now and um, what we're what we're working on. Um, but I guess it would be because we're not doing you know major backend changes. But I it's probably more of a question for Steve. So thanks for bringing it up. Yeah, that's a good that's a good point. I think you're right. Um, uh, let's see. Will the instructor still be required to release the gradebook item in order to select being inc uh, included in the course grade calculations? And I think that would probably be a yes too. That falls under the workflow of gradebook one, I would think, right? Yep. Yeah, we, we retain that. So. Okay. Um, how do you handle sessions um, if an assignment from the tool is for a particular session, for example? Oh, I'm sorry. Repeat it, Neil. Sorry about that. Um, it says, how do you handle sections? This may be another one of Gradebook 1. You're not changing it, I think. It says, how do you handle sections if an assignment from the tool is for a particular uh, section, for example? So I'm thinking they're, they're, they're saying, like, okay, let's say you're doing a test and quiz, and you're just, deplo you're just um, deploying that for, for a particular group to take. How does that display in the, in the Gradebook? And I assume that's also similar to how it displays now in, in the Gradebook. Yeah, I mean, we, we would follow um, gradebook one. I mean, I, I guess we'd have to look at that a little closer, too, because I'm, I'm not quite visualizing it. But yeah, we'd follow um, gradebook one conventions. OK. Um, see, we have two minutes. Uh, let's just see. I'll go back to some of the older questions. It says something here about, can you click on the item view to show settings? Can you click I'm on not the... sure what that means exactly. Uh, oh, to get back to the item settings? Mm -hmm. I think that's what it means. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. There's going to be a drop down in the header that allow you to edit the item details right from the header. Cool. Yep. Yeah, and and that screen you get a sense of like the you know the light the light box that we'll use, and th this will be common across um, many of those options, except as Kyle showed when you're looking at the student grades and we want to black everything else out. So here's a question that goes to that letter grade uh, uh, you mentioned about letter grade entry, maybe. Um, can the course grade percent be displayed separately from the letter grade so instructors can curve at the end? Great question. Um, we we didn't we didn't mention that, but um, that's that's what we want to do. We want to um, break up that ability and say, you know, display only the letter grade or display only the percentage or display both, um, and that should be low hanging fruit and something that a lot of people have asked about. So, thanks for that question. Cool. Um, does then I see we have like actually probably need to wrap it up. So I'm going to make this the last question, and I'll just direct everybody to please contact Jeff directly with uh, questions we weren't able to get to during the session. And Kyle. Uh, and Kyle. <laughs> uh, so last last question for the session: uh, Does the upload function provide a data preview prior to final submission and upload? Preview of the actual scores that will be imported. That's what I assume it means. Yeah, we we hadn't um, we hadn't uh, envisioned that, but but the import process is something more recent that we've worked on, so it's probably still evolving a little bit. But right now, we're not um, planning on doing it. But whoever is asking it and who's interested in it, just you know, drop an email and um, you know, give more of your ideas and and why that would be important. And, and even though I said that was the last question, I'm noticing one that I think is really quick here, which is, can this new gradebook be compatible with the old gradebooks? And I, my assumption would be that it is compatible with the, with the old gradebook one that's in the uh, Sakai core. Yeah, so I mean, the, the way that, you know, in talking with um, Steve and Sam on this early on, um, the idea was, like I said, was to really minimize the backend changes um, so that we're, we're not sort of starting completely from scratch um, and that it'll be sort of a, a natural move um, from gradebook one to this. Okay, probably if there's needed to be a conversion, there'll probably be some conversion scripts provided as part of the project to get those grades into it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. In terms of, you know, database conversion scripts, we'd see it as, as very minimal, maybe, you know, adding a column or that kind of thing, but yeah. Great. Great. Well, I see we're over by by a minute or two, so um, I think we should wrap it up. And I want to thank uh, thank you, Jeff and Kyle, very much for uh, for presenting, and thank you, audience, for some great questions. And um, I think that will uh, that will conclude the session. Great. Thank you, Neil. Thanks all. Right. all. Thank you. All right. Thank you.